So, hello and welcome to lesson 10. So, lesson 10 happens to be a practice work. Right? So, we have some questions here. We are going to try to apply what we've learned so far in Python to do it. Okay? So, the first question says, write a script to receive two user inputs as integers and calculate their sum, product, exponents, and average. Then it says, extra, make sure you run your answers to two decimal places, okay? And after that, this is question two, which we'll go through after solving question three and one. And this is question three. So this is a practice work we want to do in this video, okay? So let's take a look at the question one. It says, write a script to receive two user inputs as integers and calculate their sum, product, exponents, and average. So you know one thing about programming is that this is the end result you want to do. At the end of the day, we want to receive two integers as inputs and find their sum, their product, exponents, and average. There are several ways in which we can do that, but the most important thing is that we should arrive at the final answer or what we want to achieve, okay? So this here is a it's a way you can go about it, okay? All right. So I have a script here that I've written. So the first line here is a comment, all right? You know, in Python, comment begins with hash. So it says, a script to receive two user inputs as integers and calculate their sum, product, exponent, and average, okay? All right, so I have to receive two inputs as integers. So I create a variable called integer one, and that is going to take the first integer, right? The first input. So the first input will be the prompt to be enter first integer, and it will be stored in integer one. And I'm going to create a second variable called integer two, and I'm going to use that to take the second integer from the user. All right. And then after that, after getting the two integers from the user, all right, I'm going to perform my calculations on them. So note that the input enter first integer here is what is going to help us to take the input. And the int here means that the data type that we are interested in is what integer. So that means if you should enter anything other than an integer, the program is going to blow. But this question specifically said that we should let the input be integers. So that was the reason we brought the int data type here, all right? So after getting the two integers, the sum will just be integer one plus integer two. And we store that in a variable called sum. So they put out to be integer one times integer two. So in Python times is the star, right? And we store that in a variable called prod. Then you say we should find the exponent, right? So the exponent, we can find it in two ways. Either we can find the first number raised to the power of the second number, or the second number raised to the power of the first number. But what I did here was the first number raised to the power of the second number, right? So we can even do another one, which will be the second number raised to the power of the first number. So integer 2 raised to the power So in Python, the exponent is not the character, but it is double star, right? Then the average is equal to the sum of the two numbers over two because you have two numbers, right? So we are going to print the result to the screen, right? So we are saying print the sum of the two integers is sum, right? So this will print the two integers for us. But what we have here, the format and the dot 2f is going to make all our answers be in two decimal places, okay? All right, so this will be to display the product in two decimal places. This will be to display integer one raised to the power integer two, right? Um, we just added integer two raised to the power integer one, so let me add that print statement to this. So I just changed this to integer two raised to the power integer one is so the variable storing that is what eps one right so this will be the code we need to do what we want to do so let me save this and run this 
So when I run this, you see it tells me to what enter first integer. So let me enter in the integer. Right, let's say nine. Enter second integer. Let me enter, let's say four. So you see the results come. The sum of the two integers is 13.00. You know, in two decimal places. The product of the two integers is 36.00. Nine times four is 36. But you want it in two decimal places. So 36.00. Now I raise to the power four is 6561.00. Four raised to the power nine is 262144.00. And the average of the two numbers is what? 6.50. So that's what we wanted to do. And we've been able to do that, right? Using this code here. So you can try that on your own. So now let's go to the second question, okay? So the second question says that fill in the blank so that each of the following expressions evaluate to true, right? So for instance, it has given us an number here. You see, we have 1, 1. So before we can have 1, 1 being true, it means we can say 1 is equal to 1, and that will give us a true statement. So the first one, we have 20 dash 15, right? So we are supposed to use one operator that when we put it in the middle, we are going to get a true statement. So we can use several of them, okay? So for instance, if we use greater than, it will give us true. 20 is greater than 15 is true. So we can use greater than. If we use 20, is greater than or equal to 15 it, it will give us true right if we say 20 it's not equal to 15 that also gives us true so that means with that particular question any of these can be placed there greater than greater than or equal to and not equal to okay all right so that's very simple then let's go to the second one it says jack and jill so the only way we can get jack and jill being true is when we say jack it's not equal to jail so that gives us true so we can put that one there right then let's go to the second one so that one mango and mango so you see one is in upper case one is in lower case okay so that one too, you can see that not equal to work for that, okay? So you know, when we started learning this, I told you Python is case sensitive. So mango in upper case is different from mango in lower key. So they are not equal to. So that gives us true, right? Then where is the next question? So the next question says 30 and 30.0. So that's the same thing, right? Just that 30 is an integer and 30.0 can be a float, but they are the same thing. So 13 is equal to 30.0. And Python gives us true. Yes, we know it's true, right? Just that their data types are different. Then the last one says 4 over 2 and 2. So we know 4 over 2 is equal to 2. So that's the only thing we evaluate to 3, right? So 4 over 2 is equal to 2. So those are the things you can use to fill those things and you'll get you, okay? Right, so now let's go to the last question. So the last question says, the following code with some parts missing will print only multiples of 3. Fill in the missing statement necessary to accomplish this task. Oh, okay. Oh. So we are using the for loop, which we just discussed in our previous video. So it says for i in range of 1 to 21, if the rest you are supposed to fill it, okay. But the most important thing is that between 1 to 21, we want to print the multiples of 3. And it is supposed to be very simple because we did a very, like we did an example like that in our previous video. So let me write the code for you. So it should be. Maybe let me open a new editor.
Oh, so we just need these three lines of course to do that for us, okay? So this is what it means. For i in range of 1 to 2 into 1, that means the number is between 1 to 2 into 1. We are going to print the words multiples of 3. And for a number to be a multiple of 3, that means that number should be divisible by what 3. So that means if any number mode 3, right? If any number divided by 3, the remainder is 0, right? Then that means that that number is a multiple of 3, so we should print it. So that's what this statement means. So let me save it. Right? And run it. And you see, it's printed what multiples of 3 between 3 to what, 21. Between 1 to 21. Know that the endpoints were, were not inclusive, right? That's why 21 didn't come, right? So we have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and 18, right? So once again, this was the code we used for it. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this practice work. So in our next video, we'll talk about functions, okay? And that should be very interesting. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.